What's going on and welcome back to the vlog. Although today is going to be a little different. Instead of taking around my day-to-day -day life, we're going to do a and a I got a lot of questions brought to me from Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, all the places, and I'm really excited to answer all of your curious cues. In fact, I got over a hundred questions, you guys. I am so excited to hear that y'all are excited to get to know me a little bit more. But guess what? I'm just as excited to get to know you a lot more as well. So at any point there's a question that I'm answering that you're able to answer yourself, please do. I encourage that. I really want to get to know my friends here, okay? This is a two-way street. This is a two-way street and I want to get to know you as much as I'd like you to get to know me. I hope we're on the same page here. I am a nerd. I am a geek for data, for stats, for just information. And I took all of your questions and I threw it in a spreadsheet here. I did narrow it down from the 100. I cut out a lot of the repeats and the wildly inappropriate questions from y'all. Like one, I'll go ahead and answer one of them. Do you have an OnlyFans? No, the answer is no, nor will I ever have an OnlyFans. The day I decide I just wanna live my life with mental illness, I will definitely sign up and I'll let you know. But until then, hard pass. Any questions like that, I, no. It's, it's not on the radar here, so go away. Anyway, so that brought this all the way down to 78 questions. I will do my darndest to answer as much as I possibly can. I think you know that that's quite a bit. So I did, categorize all the questions because again nerd over here i categorize it to about me van life travel toby and youtube so if at any point you're more interested in any of those other categories feel free to skip along but also i encourage you to join the journey from minute one to minute i'm not sure how long this is going to be but to the last minute we're going to start with van life because this is a van life channel, I guess. Van life. Du, 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 du. What has been your best slash worst experience in starting van life? I've only been in my van for 10 months. And I don't feel like I've had any particular moments that stick out for best and worst. So I'm going to generalize this, this answer a little bit more. So I think the best part of living in a van is being able to go anywhere you want and do whatever you want. If I want to be in the city, I could be in the city. If I want to be in the desert, I could be in the desert. If I want to be in Colorado, if I want to be in Wyoming, if I want to be in California, if I want to be in Mexico, I can do any of that. Easy peasy, lemon freaking squeezy. There's so much freedom living out of a vehicle. The worst part, I would say, is it's not the loneliness that gets you. It takes a long time for me to feel lonely and I finally got lonely. If you watched my previous video, you'll know. It's not even that, that's not the worst part. The worst part is stability. Man, stability is so important to a good life, <laughs> I think. I do love bouncing around and doing as much as I possibly can. When I travel abroad, that's generally what I do. I don't like staying in one spot for the entire time I'm out there. I like to stay at hostels and go to as many places as I possibly can. That does get exhausting, you know? And when you were doing it full time like this, the exhaustion happens, it still happens. And so I do believe in balance and being able to do the jump around and travel as much as you possibly can bursts, but then also having a place to call home and have a routine, whether it's going to the same coffee shop every day, going to the gym every day, eating healthy all the time when you can. That's hard to do when you're always on the move. Van life, baby. So I got a few questions regarding my travel plans. One being, would love to see you make it here to Canada. Any plans for future trips? Are you coming to Baja? Any plans on coming to the East Coast, AKA Pittsburgh to be my friend? Uh, that one was from Danielle. That's uh, Brandon Gross's sister. Girl, yes, I would love to come visit you and be friends and do the East Coast thing. I would also love to go to Canada and I'd love to go to Mexico. I wanna do all of it. Do I have any immediate plans to go to any of those places? Not really, but I also don't have any plans on where I'm going next after here. Who knows, maybe I'll be in Canada in spring and then Pittsburgh in the summer and then Mexico in the winter next year. Ooh, actually that sounds like a great plan. I'll think about it. I will, I will think about it. That, does, that sounds like a great plan. Thank you so much for asking that question because you just gave me a plan. Van or VR bus, and then I have another question. DIY, van builder, or converted van? I'm gonna answer these two in one. A van, uh, through and through a van. And not just because I already live in it, I thought about this 
through and through before getting into the van. My other option would have been a truck with a camper, but what I love most about being in the van is how stealthy it is compared to other rigs, specifically the newer vans, like the Promaster, a Sprinter, or a, a Transit. I know it's not totally possible for everyone to get one of those. I personally think it would make your life a little easier if you want the balance of being out in the outdoors and also doing city life. Parking this, on the streets next to apartments or just something, I blend in so well. But then that one vintage van or that vintage RV kind of makes it look bad. I love the vintage vans. I had one. I love the vintage RVs. I built one, but I think living in it full time would make it a lot more difficult to be stealthy, to find parking and also, I was anxious all the time with my vintage van of it breaking down. It never did. I had it for two years and it never broke down once. It did stall often, I will say. So I think that's what gave me the anxiety. But I can't say for sure. I never did full time in that vintage van. And I know a lot of people who do have older vans or live in RVs, they're thriving. DIY build, van builder or converted van, I will say it really is going to depend on your situation and your drive. DIY can be cheaper if you know what you're doing. For me, I think the amount of money that I spent doing my DIY build would have been equivalent to either buying a van already converted or hiring a van builder, if I'm gonna be totally honest. The amount of lumber that I wasted building out this rig, the amount of money I spent on tools, the amount of products I purchased way ahead of time before I was even ready for it and then changed my mind but couldn't return it because it was like way past the return date. I wasted so much money doing this DIY build. Van builder, you buy a van and you hire someone to build it out for you. You're guaranteed to have a safe and sound rig. Everything will be functioning, everything will be well, you'll be able to go back to them if anything goes wrong and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help with your electrical or a broken drawer or whatever the heck. I will say though I think the worst part about hiring a van builder is just timing and availability. I remember when I was looking into all of these options the van builders in my area that were available wouldn't have been until summer of the following year and this was like August of whatever that year was and I just wasn't willing to wait that long. If you buy a van via Facebook marketplace or Craigslist or anything already converted that guarantees you to be on the road immediately which is what we all want the second we want to get into van life right. The only problem with that is you don't really know much about the integrity of the build itself unless they built it themselves and they were able to like tell you everything and if anything goes wrong you don't know anything you don't know you probably won't know how to change the light how to fix your fridge how to do whatever unless you're already an educated person in that kind of area or watch all my youtube videos on how to do it i'm kidding Am I? There's a lot of uh, pros and cons to every single spot. So it really depends on where you're at, where you want, what your timeline is, how much money you're able to put into it. If I were to get another van, I would definitely hire a van builder because I just want to make sure I have the best, most livable van possible. Not that this isn't livable. Obviously, I've been here for 11 months just fine, but there's some quirks to it that make it a little frustrating. I would never change my time doing the DIY for anything. That was the most powerful time of my life, building out a rig. Will you be living in the van life forever? I have no immediate plans to change it, so I want to live in here as long as I possibly can. I would like to have a place to call home as like a stationary place to call home and just do both. I would love that as well. At the moment, van life forever until things change. Are you interested in going to the RTR meetup in Quartzy, Arizona in January? Is that you said Quartzy? Are you going to Schooly Palooza? Also, I'm not sure what the RTR is. No, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't have any immediate plans, at least, to go to either of these gatherings. Gatherings are just not my thing. It really isn't. And it's not just not my thing. It's not this guy's thing either. I did go to Tiny Fest last year, and that was the worst thing I could have done for Toby. I didn't realize how much anxiety he would have from something like that. The amount of people that surrounded our van, even with my door closed, he found himself just like trying to dig his way underneath all of my pillows. He was so scared. And then whenever I had my door open to show someone real quick, he wanted to eat every single person alive. I can't take him to festivals like that unless I keep him in the van the whole time which isn't fair for him and even if Toby wasn't like an issue and I was able to have someone babysit him or something so I can go to these things I personally am just not a festival kind of gal I guess I could be convinced I will say I could be convinced this isn't a hard no but I, no <laughs> also no <laughs> I'm not going I'm so sorry <laughs> since cleaning out your van how many pairs of shoes have you worn this is from Karina I wore six pairs of shoes. Thank you uh, very stinking much, okay? It's only been, what, a month, maybe two months since I left? It has not been two months. I don't know how long it's been. It's been about a month and a half since I left, and I wore six different pairs of shoes. I think that's a win. 
What's the most interesting small town you've traveled to? Jackson. I wish I stayed there a little bit longer. Great place, a great place for van life. You could stay parked on the street for up to three days at a time. Very van life friendly. There's a lot of van lifers there and the temperatures are perfect. I would say in the summer it, to hide away from the heat from everywhere, go to a mountain town. Mountain towns have the best temperatures. I kind of wish I was there right now if I'm gonna be totally honest. So I have these two questions that I'm gonna have transition over to the next category about me. Do you ever get scared being all alone? And how do you manage to feel fear and do things anyway? I think that was a really good question, honestly, because it's such a power move to be able to move forward even when you're scared. I'm gonna talk to you in a way that's really gonna sound super cheesy and probably irritating. You have to embrace the discomfort. You need to feel discomfort. You need to be uncomfortable to grow as a person and growth equals happiness. So to really answer how I've been able to do it all these years, one, I got super inspired by people on of YouTube. Before van life, I was really into travel vloggers. So I watched I, actually, I was really into travel vloggers and fitness vloggers, not even van life vloggers. And they inspired me so much to be a better person to myself, to the world, and to travel as much as I possibly can. And to see other people doing it made me think it was totally possible. Even when I was scared to death to get on my flight to go to Bali. Bali was the first country I went to by myself. I was scared to death flying all the way across the world to do it. I convinced myself the entire time. This is momentary discomfort, Sarah. This is momentary discomfort. You're gonna have the time of your life. You're gonna enjoy yourself. You're gonna keep doing this forever and ever. You're gonna make friends. You're going to have lasting memories. You're gonna be scared. It's all temporary. You're gonna be scared every time, but once you keep pushing and keep going and keep doing, you grow that muscle and you become a stronger person and a more capable person and more fearless person. And while fear will always kind of just exist and be there i will always welcome her it keeps me sharp it keeps me aware it keeps me safe i however won't allow the fear to embody my entire well-being i'm still scared of a lot of things i really am but i don't allow that to be the reason why i don't do anything i hope that helps if that doesn't help i think that watching these videos will help you immensely like it has me i've watched it like three or four times i'm not kidding i am not kidding I am inspired. All right, so we're gonna get a little juicy. We're immediately gonna get to the juice factor of this entire q and I have a responsibility as someone who intentionally puts themselves online and share things with you to be straight up and to be honest and to not hide things. There was something that I ignored or denied in a way, and I got a lot of questions about this. I get comments regarding this frequently. So the question is, are you dating Brandon Gross? If this question caught you off guard and you don't know who that is, Brandon is someone that I spent a lot of time with in the beginning of the year in San Diego. We were roommates. We would hang out almost every, basically every day. Then at one point he stayed in my van with me for seven days traveling from Oregon to California. And then we continue to like hang out while we were in California. Naturally, when a man and a woman are spending a lot of time together, people get really interested in the real, actual relationship dynamics of us. We are friends. But I will say we did date. We were seeing each other at one point in that time for a few weeks. A few weeks before he left to Guatemala and I left for Bali. Obviously we're separated, nothing's happening. And then both back in America, he so happens to be in Oregon when I flew back from Bali and needed a ride back to California. So we stayed in my van for the following seven days. We're not dating today. I think that's just the gist of it. He's still around, but we're not in a romantic relationship. Nothing bad happened. No one hates anybody. No one was mean to anyone. No one did anything to the other person. It was just, isn't it? It's not the right time. It's not the right, maybe not even the right person. I don't know. We were just not meant for each other. Simple as that. Make sure you go check out his videos and tell him hi for me and we're good. <laughs> we're still feeling a little juicy. I'm gonna go ahead and answer these questions. Are you single? Why are you single? Do you have a boyfriend? The answer is no, I don't have a boyfriend and yes, I'm single. Why are you single? It's such a weird question to me. Um, you know what's... <laughs> you know what's wild? When I tell people I'm single, one of the first reactions I get is what is wrong with you? It's like such a weird response. Why can't a person just be single and focus on themselves? Okay, he doesn't want me to talk about it. I'm not single, what am I saying? I got my Toby Toby. Okay, you wanna go outside? Oh, that feels nice. Sorry, it got really hot in here, so we just needed that breeze. You wanna stay right there? Go down. Good boy. Lay down. Okay, why am I single? I am single half by choice, half not by choice. By choice is I'm not outwardly pursuing anybody. I'm on the dating apps and I'm swiping, but I haven't met up with 
anybody. I don't meet up with people on there. I'm, I'm that person. I can't, I can't, I just can't stand small talk. And as soon as someone starts small talking with me, I'm over it, I'm bored, and I just move on. I have been in relationships before. I'm 30 years old, obviously. I've been in great relationships, really beautiful relationships, ones that I was treated like a queen and a princess, but I wasn't ready to be in, in a committed relationship at that time in my life. When I felt like it was in a place where I could be committed to somebody, I did, and it was with the wrong person. I'm still recovering from that. That was two years ago that I was in this relationship with the person, and it wasn't healthy. It was, I have since then just been really just particular about who I choose to spend my time with. I'm not dating for fun anymore. I'm dating for the last time. I want to make sure that the person I spend the rest of my life with is the right person. I'm a very like loyal person. I'm a very committed person. And I always like try to make things work. And I don't want to put that kind of effort in the wrong person. And knowing me, I probably would. So I am very, very picky with who I choose to spend my time with. And that has caused me to be single this entire time. <laughs> The half not boy choice. I think I kind of answered that. I would love to have someone here doing life with me, living in the van or a van next to me, uh, traveling the world, maybe do, doing YouTube stuff with me, starting a business. I would love to have a partner to do that with. But again, I don't want to be with the wrong person. I know it's not a bad thing to be picky. I wish I was pickier before getting into that previous relationship. Anyway, that's where I'm at with my singlehood. I'm too busy at the moment taking care of myself, focusing on myself and building myself up. I hope that answers that. I have a lot to say on like being single and stuff, but maybe I should start a podcast. Maybe, should I? Would you listen to it? What was it like being on a TV show? If you didn't know, I was on this TV show called Gutted. Gutted is like a van building competition where an RV, a school bus, and a van compete to build out the best rig in only five days. I was on Team RV, and a lot of my lifelong friends that I have today are from that show. It honestly felt like summer camp. It was so much fun. They rented out this entire campsite out in Missouri, and we all had our rigs. So we had our own little designated camp spot. The first two days, it was really scary having these professional cameras just following you around, watching your every move. You build relationships with not just the other cast members, but also the crew. I would totally do it again if I had the opportunity. It was such a wholesome experience. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it. It's on Blink Space. You do have to download the app to be able to watch it. As someone who has ADHD and relates to the difficulties you have expressed, do you take medication? If so, do you find it helpful? What are things you struggle with the most? I don't take medication. I'm prescribed Adderall, 20 milligrams of Adderall, but I stopped taking it years ago because I feel like it took away from my personality. It made me really dull, it made me boring. I was bored of myself. I lacked interest, you know? It was definitely really helpful for me in school when I was procrastinating a lot and lost the drive to continue school, but it helped me get through my last leg and graduate college. Grateful that something exists to help me out, but I'm not in that kind of pressure anymore, and nor do I want to be put in that position where I'm pressured to feel like I need to take Adderall again. The struggle mostly hit me the most and created most of my mental illness was having ADHD in a corporate setting because they just don't cater to that at all. It's, it's wild. It's a wild, wild world we live in up here, uh, my fellow neurodivergents. My neurotypicals, I encourage you to do the work and educate yourself on what it's like to live next to someone who is a little bit different than you. <laughs> What's really been helpful with living in a van though is that I feel like it really sets the motion for me to be productive because I can't wake up and just be lazy. I have to get up, take Toby on a walk and move my van. While I am a messy gal, I don't like being messy. Every single day I clean my van and I just like kind of follow the dopamine, I ride it. So living in a van has been so helpful with my ADHD because I get those doses of dopamine from being productive immediately in the beginning of the day and I ride it. I'm able to get other things done from it. I hope that answers your question. Did you ever get into being a model? Yeah, I did actually. I, when I was in high school, I got scouted a few times and then I finally gave in and I did modeling. I will say I didn't enjoy it. It was really toxic and I think I don't know where I'd be today if I actually pursued it as a career. Everything that is toxic about the model industry is true and valid and I have experienced it. I'll give you a few stories. 
what's really cool about the agency I had, and I'm sure a lot of agencies are like this. I'm not that familiar with the industry, to be honest, at this point. They were partnered with a lot of other agencies all around the world. So when those worldly agencies would come visit, they'd give us an opportunity to audition with them. And I got called often to do that. One of them was with this agency in France, Milan specifically. I know, I could have been, I could have been that gal. So I went in the week before to get my measurements in so they just have that on deck. And my agency told me to lose an inch. I'm telling you, I was stick skinny. Clothes did not fit me. So that was just so wild to me that they were asking me to do that. A week later, I did lose the inch. I auditioned and I got in. Here's the thing. I, this is where I kind of regret it a little bit, a lot of it, I'm not gonna lie actually. They wanted me to actually go to China. So they wanted me to sign this contract to do six months in China. I was scared out of my mind. We're gonna bring this back to the question before, like how do you manage your fears? This is one of those moments where I wish I had a hold on my fears and I was able to manage it and I didn't. I completely rejected it because I was scared out of, my, out of my mind to be 17 years old going out to China by myself. At the same time, I also had a boyfriend and I was, didn't want to leave him. I didn't want him to leave me if I was gone for six months. Stupid. That would have been an opportunity of a lifetime. Also, who knows where I would have been today. All I know is that the girl that did take the deal did so much China Vogue out there. She did China Vogue. She was on the cover of a few China Vogue magazines. It could have been me, but I was young. What can I say? I did this gig where this designer was having a party and they had three models and what we had to do was stand on these podiums with lights beaming on us while everyone was walking around us eating their hors d'oeuvres being all rich and snooty and stuff and we're just standing there being touched getting the you know the clothes looked out getting us looked at it was it was such a weird experience we were there for hours hours and hours and hours. We'd probably rotate every 15 minutes, get down, one person would leave at a time. We'd walk off, then go in the back, change our clothes, come back. Again, hours of just standing there with lights beaming on you, not saying a word, dehydrated, hungry, all of the things. You can't eat. For these kind of things, these live things, you just cannot eat because if you eat, you'll get bloated, right? I have no food in my body. I have no water. I'm exhausted. I'm already skinny and I'm unwell. I remember after my like fourth time getting off the podium to change, I almost passed out. I was walking down the hallway at this point. Thank goodness there was no one around but maybe someone should have been around. I fell down to my knees. I almost passed out. So when I got to the back to change my clothes again, I was just like kind of doing this thing. And the woman was like, wait, are you okay? And that's when they told me to just like go home. Fortunately, they were nice enough to let me go. But at the same time, that would have been tragic if a model just fell off a podium, you know? And then on top of that, there are so many jobs I didn't get, right? I would go to these go is what you would call them. And you'd hold a number up or something and they'd just look at you. That's, that's how interviews would go. You would show up, you'd either walk, you would stand there and hope that you're pretty enough to be selected for this job. It takes a huge toll on someone's confidence. Let me tell you that much right now. I was in high school too. It was really, really, really bad for my confidence when I wouldn't get jobs. I lost more jobs than I got jobs. It's not a great place for young women, I will say. Growing women who are still struggling with their confidence and their body and everything. I mean, I'm sure it's the same for men too, but I won't speak for them. I'm not a man, so I don't know what, what y'all like deal with. But um, yeah, as a woman, it was detrimental to my mental health and I left. I ended up pursuing career in IT. That also didn't work out. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> Okay, so I really do have a lot more questions about me and about van life and stuff. Have you been answering these questions yourselves? Honestly, I would love to know more about you as well. So again, I'm gonna reiterate, if there are any questions that I've asked so far or that have been asked of me so far that you're able to answer yourself, answer them. I wanna know more about you too. It's not just about me, it's about us. Travel slash van life. Would you ever take your van abroad? Do you plan on visiting other countries with your van? Yes. I mean, I want to, I would love to. Do I have the money to do that? Absolutely not. Subscribe to my channel. That is a dream of mine. It is a goal of mine. So I would love to get to a place where I'm financially stable and able to do something like that. I would love to travel down to Patagonia in my van through South America. I would love to take it through Europe. I'd love to go to Morocco in it. I want to travel in my van. How sick would that be? My creative juices is just tingling right now. I would love it. Subscribe to the channel.
where is the next place you plan to travel to outside of the country since you're shooting for 40 by 40? Did you already have your remaining countries picked out? So if you didn't know, I had goals to hit 30 countries before 30. I'm 30. COVID did me dirty. I wasn't able to hit all 30 countries. So now we're doing, trying to do 40 before 40. I still have a ways to go. There's a lot of countries I need to visit at this point. I've hit 25 countries so far. Here's my thing about travel. I don't care where I go. I just want to go somewhere. All going to depend on price and availability, like my availability of when I'm able to travel again. So the next time I travel, I don't, I don't even know because again, I'm not financially able to at the moment. I would love to do more of South America. I'd love to do more of Asia. I want to go to Europe. I want to go to Turkey, Egypt, South Africa. I want to do so much. I, it's, it's like insane. Like I want to cry thinking about all the places I want to go to and I just can't right now, purely financially. So I need to work on something that will get me money because YouTube isn't doing it. Okay, let's talk about Toby. Let's talk about Toby for a second. Before we get started, some of you have asked what breed of dog Toby is. And I want you to give me all your guesses. And by the end of the Toby section, I will share with you what he is. I will give you a hint. He is a mixed breed. You're not going to get all of it. So the top two mixes you think he is. Top three if you can. So what is Toby's story? I picked up Toby back in 2017 at the animal shelter, specifically the Oregon Humane Society. In Oregon, I'm not sure what it's like in other places because I haven't looked for dogs in other places, but I'm adamant about rescue. I'm a rescue gal. If you don't pick up the dog you see at the shelter the day you go in, it's not going to be there the next day. It's wild how many dogs just like immediately get adopted there. I was like losing hope. I'd go to these places and see a dog I want to see, wait two hours, and then that dog ended up getting adopted by the person that was in front of me kind of thing. And then finally, I go to the Oregon Humane Society for the second time that same day. I don't know. I, I don't know why I did. Oh, I know why I did. I wanted to check out this white German Shepherd that was there. When you're at the Humane Society, you can go in the back and like look at all the dogs that are there and then you see a dog you like and you come back to the front and you tell the receptionist I want to see dog A and dog B or whatever and then when it's your turn they take you in the back to visit the dog. I went in the back I looked looked for that German Shepherd to see if it was still there he was still there I came back to the front asked to see him I waited about an hour when they took me back they took me through the kennels again I saw Toby just sitting there I'm like, wait, who's this dog? I'm like, oh yeah, he just got put up for adoption. Can I see him next, please? I would love to see him next. I go in the back, and at that point, this woman's convincing me not to get the German Shepherd, honestly, because it was still a puppy. I didn't realize that. It was seven months old, and it was huge. It was so big. And so I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't get this German Shepherd, and I shouldn't visit it, because if I like it when I meet it, I'm going to end up getting it, because I'm just like that. I'm impulsive like that. We canceled the Shepherd, and I waited for Toby to be available. Fortunately, the family that was going to see Toby canceled and they sent him over to me. It was love at first sight. <laughs> Toby ran straight up to me and put his paw on my lap. And I knew for a fact that if I wanted him, I had to get him right then and there. And so I did. I picked him up. Um, I don't know if you can see him, but that's his butt. Oh, there he is. Hi, buddy. You're so old now. You're so crispy. Toby, he was a year and a few months when I got him. November is our adoptiversary, by the way. He's seven years old now. In November, I would have had him for six years. Anyway, he's grown a lot. I love him to death. And that's how the story and how I got him. I can go more in detail about my journey with him, but that would turn this video into like seven days long. Did Toby have any difficulties at the beginning of van life or was he comfortable? He did have difficulties actually, I will say. Toby has never liked staying in the same bed as me. We never shared the same bed. He prefers his own space and so do I. So it works out. In here, he doesn't have his own space. We have to share the bed. I did have the front seat like available for him to go to anytime he wants. And that's generally where he was like in the past few months have been sleeping in the bed with me, which has been great because we can snuggle and have a good time together. And on top of that, even like driving, commuting around in my van before I fully, you know, converted and we fully moved in, he had a difficult time sitting up front. It just isn't comfortable for dogs up there, I feel, um, unless you have a platform there so they can like lay down. Otherwise, he adapted pretty well. He's a very adaptable dog. And that's what I love most about him. All right, we just reached the end of the Toby section. I, I, there are still so many questions, but I can't answer all of them. I'm so sorry. I'm doing my best here. Here are the results of Toby's breed. <laughs> he is 38% pit bull, 20% plot, 12% tree walking coon hound, 11% Labrador retriever, 11% red bone coon hound, and whatever the heck super mutt is. 
Let's talk about YouTube now. Another question regarding Brandon. Any plans for another video with Brandon Gross? You two are so entertaining together. Let's call him because I don't know what he's been up to. Sarah Shamblin. Hey bud, how's it going? What's going on? I'm just filming a YouTube video. Hello, hello YouTube fans. I've been MIA on Sarah's channel for quite some time. She shunned me to the darkness. <laughs> is that what it is? You shunned me. Hi, I'm back. I don't know I'll see him next. I probably won't, to be honest, at this point, because he's just out gallivanting in the world and just totally restless. I mean, I'm restless too, but he's restless on the other side of the country, so. How do you deal with hate on the internet? Uh, that's a good question. Fortunately, I'm actually not at a place where I get any hate. Uh, we're gonna knock on wood. I mean, I think I get a couple here and there. Out of all the videos I've posted so far, I've seen maybe two. I'm not going to unsubscribe. What I have like convinced myself to think that everybody that you interact with in this world has to like you is delusional. All different people, we all come from different places. We grew up in different environments. We were conditioned in different ways. We don't like everybody we meet. And me to think that every person that comes across my videos has to like me, it would be delusional. Yeah, I mean, I get some condescending comments, I guess. I get annoying comments, inappropriate comments, but those really just don't bother me. I, it really doesn't. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's basically how I deal with it. I, I am a flavor and not everyone likes this flavor and that's okay. We move on. The right people that like this flavor of YouTube will be here and subscribe to the channel. Do I look at my comments and do I read the ones from older videos? The answer is yes, I absolutely do. It doesn't matter what video you comment on, whether it's the most recent one or the my very first one, I will see it. The comments are in chronological order. If you comment today, right now, at this very moment, on my very first video, it's gonna pop up here and, and I, I'm gonna see it until someone else comments on another video. So that's really cool. I'm able to see comments from chronolo chronological order. I do, however, prioritize my time and mind bandwidth on the comments from my most recent videos. I do respond to as many comments as I possibly can. I love interacting with you guys and like building relationships with you, so I will do that. Sometimes I don't do it right away because it is mentally exhausting and mentally taxing to like have a conversations with 11,000 people. How crazy is that? I'm at 11 and a half thousand subscribers, you guys. I do see them all and please continue commenting whether I actually like message back or not or comment back or whatever, I promise you I'm seeing all of it. I'm prioritizing my responses to the most recent videos because I can I can only respond to so much. <laughs> Any more giveaways? You don't even know. I have two giveaways coming up. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but make sure you keep watching my videos so you can see what it is and when it like when it is. But what I will tell you is that to enter to win any of my giveaways, you have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, and then follow whatever brand that I'm working with, their Instagram as well, and then comment on that video. If you wanna be ahead of it, make sure you're already subscribed to this channel and you follow me on Instagram. What inspired you to start a YouTube channel and how do you keep motivated to film and edit your journey? First of all, I had always, 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 always wanted to start a YouTube channel. I wish I started it when I was backpacking Europe for the six months that I did. Uh, that's actually when I wanted to start it. I got inspired by travel vloggers to travel and also document document it and I tried I'm not gonna lie I did try and then immediately failed because I was too scared I, I wasn't ready I wasn't ready to start a YouTube channel so I didn't and then I just convinced myself that it wasn't for me life goes on it really took this massive turn in my life that happened um, to get to where I am today to like really believe and trust myself. I think I want to tell that story in an absolutely separate video, but just know the outcome of that turned into this version of me that I'm most proud of actually. I decided to finally start the YouTube channel, mainly because I needed a creative outlet. I had nothing. I went to school for IT. I had a career in IT. All the time my world was spent on technical stuff. And while I love data, I'm a data nerd. I also really needed a creative outlet. Filming the YouTube videos and editing them was that just that for me. So it really started with the van build series. I found that editing the videos was so much fun for me. If you were to watch those videos, I will say they aren't my best. <laughs> 
I was still trying to figure myself out, whether it was me being comfortable with the camera, me discovering how to use this camera, and also understanding how to edit. And I will tell you, every time I edit a video, I, I take a really long time, mainly because I'm taking the opportunity to learn something new every time. Learning more things with the editing, I've had more fun filming as well, like creating like more cinematic footage, just being more intentional with my work. And I'm really excited to see where this YouTube journey sends me because I'm getting even more and more enlightened and inspired for every video that I post. Would you rather live a modest but stable life in your dream van or become social media successful and be caught in the traps of having to maintain the social media success, such as feeding the algorithm with posting regularly, making certain types of videos, taking on sponsorships that you might not believe in, expanding the kind of things you create in order to keep building your audience? I'm going to be honest with you, and I don't know if you're going to like the answer, but I hope every question I've answered before this helps you understand. I and seeing YouTube as a business. It started as like a hobby and a creative outlet, but now I, I really love doing it. I want to do this full time. And so I have to start treating it like a business. And fortunately for me, I love data. I love looking at it. I love looking at the analytics often and seeing where I can improve. And like any business, you don't wanna just get to a place and settle once you're at a comfortable place. You wanna constantly grow. I will always aim to continue growing on this platform the same way I would continue aiming to grow in any business venture I decide to pursue. The same way if I was in a corporate setting, I would want to grow from whatever position I am, level one to level two, level five, you know? I don't want this, me saying this, to be received as, oh, she just wants to be YouTube famous or whatever. Right now, my present goal is to get to a place where I am financially comfortable and I'm able to fund my gas and I'm not using my credit card anymore. That's one. Two, I'm able to travel. Three, I can get a babysitter for Toby so I can um, do more things during the day and not leave him in the van. I just want to be able to take care of myself. So right now, my present goal is let's just get to a place where we're comfortable. And then from there, would I settle there? I would never do. Why would I do that? I would never want to just like settle from there. I'd want to see myself grow. I want to be able to like grow enough to be able to save money for a retirement. I don't exactly have a 401k. I want to quickly save money for a retirement. I want to quickly save money for a house, my future children's colleges. I, I want to grow as a person and it's going to mean I need to grow my, my business. At the same time, I want to continue living in my van. But because this is kind of a binary question, where are my nerds at? My answer would have to be one, or for my non-nerds, two. I wouldn't allow myself to get caught in those traps. You don't see me doing trends. And if I do, it's because I want to. I'm being my most authentic self. And two, I'm doing what I want to do to be successful while also paying attention to my analytics because I like doing that. That's just purely because I enjoy doing that. I enjoy looking at those numbers go up. I also enjoy looking at the numbers go down where they need to go down. Does that answer your question? I, I hope I didn't disappoint any of you with that answer. I would hate to be asked to settle when I'm comfortable. You know what I mean? Do you hear that? There's people outside talking. So we're going to wrap this up a bit. The sunset is stunning. I would love to watch it go down. I'm going to let him outside. Real quick. Let's try and go through all of them, regardless of the categories, and see if I could rapid fire some of the questions that I didn't answer yet. <laughs> Do you like any type of dance fitness? It's funny that this question was asked. Two days ago, I went to a fitness class and when I went, I arrived a little late so I didn't really realize what I was walking into. We were doing the warm up, and I was like, okay, what's going on? We're like moving our bodies. I'm like, okay, we're moving to the rhythm of the music. Why are, why are we still doing this? And we were doing it the entire time. I joined a Zumba class. I did not realize it. I was not thriving and I hated it so much. But unfortunately, there were only four other people there and I felt like it'd be so rude if I just left. So yeah, I don't like dance fitness. <laughs> I'm more of a weight training kind of gal and recently I'm getting into running because I have a goal to love the things that I hate and I love running. I love running. Running is such a passion of mine and I'm gonna do it forever and ever and ever. I'm getting better at it. Who knew you could get better at something like running? I know it's difficult to see the future, but do you have any short-term or long-term goals? Thank you for starting that question off with, I know it's difficult because it is really difficult for me. I kind of just see what's right in front of me. And while that has its perks, it prevents me from looking more forward. And I, I am, my goal right now is to look more forward. My long-term goals to be in a better financial position and fund my life in the way that I can find 
enjoyment and fulfillment. I'm hoping to be more financially stable by like spring of 2024 without having to give in and go back to my corporate job. Short-term goals want to make the money moves to get to that point. I want to come up with a business plan, a game plan so that I can just execute things come 2024. What do you have planned for the rest of the year? To build a routine and get back on my fitness game. I've been slacking all summer and I, I that's what I want to do for, the, I mean, for as long as I can, but really hyper focus on it for the rest of the year. I also on a mission to elevate myself, my personal self a little bit more and start getting into mental toughness. I want to be more mentally tough. I want to be a great person in this world and not just a good person. I want to be a great person. And it kind of starts with being kinder to myself. I'm not that kind to myself. I'm really hard on myself and I think being more mentally tough will help me persevere through that. Does Karina have a YouTube channel? She does, technically she does, but I talked to her and she doesn't want to like get back on it. We should just hit her up in the comment section and be like, Karina, get on your YouTube. We love you. You're amazing. You're beautiful. You're stunning and you're funny as hell. So get back on YouTube encourage her by subscribing to her channel. I'll link her YouTube below. Speaking of Karina, there's an, another question here. People asking when she's gonna come travel with me. We actually talked about it. We haven't really planned anything, but I would love for her to come visit me down here in San Diego and get in my van and go to Mexico together or just do something together. Again, hit her up and be like, hit Sarah up, go stay in the van with her. We love you, you're amazing. You guys are awesome together. Encourage her. What made you take the plunge to start van life? I think I want to make an, a dedicated video to this. As I said before about the YouTube, like starting my YouTube channel, both of that kind of came hand in hand. I'm going to tell my story of how I got to this part of my life, to this chapter of my life, like the prequel, I guess you might call it. It's going to be tough. I'm going to be honest. It's going to be tough for me to do it because it was a really hard time in my life, but I think it's time that I share it. So I think we're gonna end it right there. I hope you guys were also answering the questions as well as we were going along. But I have one more question for you. Would you be interested in me going live on YouTube one day? Would you participate? Would you come? Would you join me on a live? Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Would love that, it helps me out. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'll see you next week, bye. I gotta know.